Eve was the first person to disobey, and then Adam disobeyed. Through that disobedience, sin entered into the world. And because of sin, that's why people die. So the reason that you die, the reason that everybody dies is because all have sinned. It's because everybody sins. But there's a way out of death because Jesus died on a cross so you could live. He shed his blood so that you could be forgiven of all your sins. And you all, every God loves the whole world. He doesn't just love a few people. He loves every single person. And you know, it's good we have a lot, even you everybody and he loves children too because he said he even said this check this out he said unless you become like little children you'll never see the kingdom of god so if you want to go to heaven you have to be innocent like a child and that's the way that you get into heaven is through what jesus christ did it's through faith alone so there's nothing that you can do to earn your salvation to merit god's grace to merit god's favor it's only by trusting in what jesus did for you yes go ahead when Jesus, this is what Jesus said, I'll tell you. Good question. Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you've already fornicated with her in your heart. And that's a sin because God, how would you want somebody to think about your sister like that? Or to think about your mother like that? It's wrong. And, and that's why, you have, it's exactly, it's weird and it's wrong. That's why God says he wants us to be holy. He doesn't want us to disobey him. He doesn't want us to watch things on our phones or on the computer that are on yeah go ahead well a good question jesus says wide is the gate that leads to destruction and narrow is the way that leads to life so there's going to be a lot more people according to jesus in hell than in heaven so he says make every effort to enter through the narrow gate because there's a narrow gate that leads to heaven and a few people make it and there's a wide gate that leads to hell so that's a good observation go ahead it's wrong to commit any act of sexual immorality because this is what the bible says that your body is a temple of the holy spirit your body is a temple no you can but that's what marriage is for marriage is an ordinance of god yeah, go ahead. Then you, you can ask Jesus to forgive you. And if you're truly sincere, he'll forgive you of all your sins, no matter what you did. Even if it's the most perverted thing you can imagine, God will still forgive you. And that's how great his love is for you. So what you have to do is you have to repent, which means you have to change your mind. If your mind is set on sin and serving and doing whatever you want, Jesus says, change your mind. Stop thinking about yourself. Stop thinking about what's going to make you feel good. Instead, set your thoughts on the things of above. Set your mind on the law of God and do your best to obey him and to follow him. And if you trust in him with all your heart, he's going to give you the strength to overcome sin. Because the Bible says there's no temptation that is overtaken us except what's common to man so god can help you to overcome sin we have to truly desire it and have a sincere heart yeah go ahead it doesn't matter what sin you committed so being gay god says that it's, you shouldn't be gay because that's not the way that god designed men and women and if you're doing that you have to repent of your sins and you have to you have to say to god that you want his holy spirit and that you want his will to be done It's a sin, and we shouldn't commit any sin. So, exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't single out homosexuality as an especially grievous sin, but Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed because of that sin. And I would definitely, because the Bible says flee from sexual immorality. And when he's talking to the church, he says, and this is your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. So the way that God sanctifies you, he sets you apart, and he slowly conforms you to his image. And you do that by abstaining from sexual immorality. And if you really love God, His grace is so great that He's going to change the desires of your heart. So if you have homosexual desires or if you desire drinking or doing drugs, God, He's going to help you. He's going to change the desires of your heart. So you no longer want those things that are wrong, that, are, that God doesn't like.
Uh, in Romans 1, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, the Bible says that no homosexual has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Also in Galatians 5, 21, and in Ephesians 5, 5, he says no homosexual will have an inheritance in the... And it's not just the homosexual. Fornicators, idolaters, liars, they all have their part in the lake of fire. And also in the first chapter of Romans... In Romans chapter 1, it doesn't matter what, what, what version you're reading because if you read Romans chapter 1, he says that the women exchanged the natural function and burned in their lust for one another. Likewise, the men exchanged the natural function of the woman and burned in their lust for one another. See, you don't need that word homosexual or whatever word you're, you're hung up on. Romans 1 is clearly defining that. That's exactly what I'm saying. You can't, you, you, I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. The Bible says that we have to obey God. We have to, I don't have to obey you. I have to obey God. I'm obeying God because I'm preaching the gospel. Yeah. The, I'm not judging you. How do you know my heart? You don't know my heart. I'm not judging you. I didn't say you were going to hell. I just said that. Yeah, because if you, because the Bible says the Bible says that you can't serve two masters. You're serving your flesh. You're serving the desires of your heart. Right. You don't have to go to hell. You have you can repent and be forgiven, and God will change the desires of your heart. So you won't want to do things. You won't want to do things that God doesn't approve of. If you truly surrender, see, Jesus says, whoever loves his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will keep it for eternal life. So you have to decide, do you love your life? And do you want to lose your life? Because if you love your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life and you put your God wants your heart. He wants everything. He wants you to give him your whole heart. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, lust is when you look at someone with sexual intentions. And Jesus says not to do that. It doesn't matter who you're lusting after, whether it's a man or a woman. It's all forms of... Huh? It doesn't matter. Lust is lust, and Jesus says that that's adultery. So we have to abstain from sexual immorality. And it's really sad because you guys are really young and you have so many questions about lust and... It's a problem with the education system and... Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. You guys shouldn't be setting your minds on these things. You shouldn't be thinking about lust. You shouldn't be thinking about these things. The Bible says to meditate on the things above. Set your... Yes. What? Don't think... It, see, exactly. The Bible says you can't serve money and God. So you have to choose. Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve money? Okay, but you can't have both. You can't say, I want God to give me all this money and also I love God because if you truly love God, you'll forsake your life. You'll say, and you'll mean it. You'll say, God, I'll give you my whole life. He, he wants your heart. He wants you to give him your heart and surrender all the desires that you want and say, you have to say, God, your will be done, not mine. And you have to really mean it. Yeah. God can do anything that he wants, but he cannot deny himself. So the Bible says that God cannot deny himself. So if you're asking, can God logically contradict himself? He can't do something that's logically impossible. Yeah, we're preaching the gospel and, and the, the Bible says, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. How will they believe if they have not heard? So in, in, to, to, to pre the way that people believe is through hearing the gospel and so I'm, I'm preaching the gospel so that people can hear it and be saved this is the only way the only way someone can be saved is if they hear the gospel and that's why we're preaching the gospel we're, we're not being obnoxious we're just preaching the gospel all these people if you don't want to hear it you can leave but all these people want to hear the gospel
all these people want to hear what we have to say because God is drawing. All, look at these little children. You know, Jesus says you have to become like a little child or you can't see the kingdom of heaven. So if you're arrogant and prideful and you're going to come and judge and say, why are you preaching? You shouldn't preach the gospel. Why, how, why would you call yourself a Christian if you don't want to preach the gospel? Jesus says to preach the gospel to all creation. So do you guys understand what you have to do to be saved? Okay, who would like to answer what they have to do to be saved? You have to repent and believe the gospel, exactly. You have to change your mind. You have to stop thinking that you can do whatever you want with your body. Because God wants you to do something with your body and He wants it to be holy. So that He can give you His Holy Spirit. Because God's not going to give you His Holy Spirit in, if your temple is unclean. The Bible says your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. So God wants to live inside your body. That's His new temple. So you got to make sure to keep it as pure and as clean as possible so God can come and dwell inside it. Yes, sir. You know, God can heal so broken wounds. There's a lot of brokenness. And the reason that these things happen is because of sin. It's because Adam disobeyed God and that's how sin entered the world. And death comes through sin and all these other horrible things that happen to people. It's really bad, but God can heal those broken wounds and He's just, which means He's going to give everybody according to what they did. And God will heal you no matter what you did. And He'll forgive you. Go ahead. No, you're incorrect to say that. God said, the Bible says that there's no partiality with God. So whether you're black or white or Jew or Gentile or old or young, there's no partiality with God. And, and you know, the Bible teaches that all people are descended from one man, which means we're all related. We're all cousins, which is not what they teach you in school. Evolution teaches you that you're descended from this line of monkey and she's descended from this other line of monkey. And this is not... That's very racist to think that people evolve through different trajectories. That's a very racist ideology that you're being taught in your science class and in your history class. But the Bible is not racist. The Bible says that God made all nations from one man. And so that means we're all related. So if you believe the Bible, racism doesn't really make any sense because you're just being racist against your own flesh and blood, your own cousin. We're all descended from one man. No, you don't have to tip me. You can keep that. Uh, thank you. God bless you. Jesus Christ can give all of you guys eternal life. But you have to believe in Him with all your heart and you have to surrender. You can eat ice cream. But you have to trust in Jesus alone. Love Him because He first loved us. And you all can go to heaven. Jesus Christ loves you guys so much. He wants everybody here to go to heaven. That's why we have a speaker because God doesn't just want a few of you. He wants everyone that can hear to go to heaven. Every single one of you can be saved. God desires that. He desires that all should come to repentance and that none should perish. That's what He wants. He wants everybody to get saved. And that's why we preach, because that's the only way to get saved, is by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you want to get saved today, or have you already been saved? You've already been saved. Amen. Is there anybody that hasn't been saved that wants to get saved, that wants to go to heaven? You want to get saved? Okay, go ahead. The walk on water effect, that's something that Jesus did to demonstrate who he was. That he controls the sea, he controls the wind, he controls the time. No, God's probably not going to give you the ability to walk on the sea. You know, I can't say for sure because God can do all kinds of miracles. But, but you know, when he gave his disciples the ability to cast out demons, and they were casting out demons, and they were really excited, they were rejoicing, and... He said, don't rejoice because the demons are subjected to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So the greatest cause for rejoicing is that our names are written in heaven. That's the most important thing. That's greater than any miracle that God will give you to perform. So if you guys want to go to heaven, what you have to do is just receive by faith what Jesus did for you. Do you want to go to heaven? Have you been saved? Amen. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody who hasn't been saved that wants to get saved, that wants to receive the Holy Spirit? You want to go to heaven? Come here. 
You haven't been saved yet? What's your name? Jesse, you want to go to heaven when you die? You understand who Jesus Christ is. Who is he? Uh, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. What did he do for you? He died on the cross to repent my sins. Amen. He died on the cross so that you wouldn't have to face the judgment of God. See, God poured his wrath on Jesus on that cross because he loved you. He loved you and he didn't want you to have to die. So if you trust in him, then you have to pray sincerely that God will forgive you of your sins. So you have to admit, you have to truly come to an understanding that you broke God's law and that you're worthy of death, that you're worthy of his wrath. But understand that he loved you and that Jesus, he paid the fine for you. So God should have poured his wrath on you, but he loved you and he gave his son to die in your place. It's like... If you know the story of Abraham and Isaac, he told Isaac to sacrifice his only son on the altar. And, but God loved Abraham and, and he gave him a, ra a lamb to die instead of his son. So that's Jesus. He gives us Jesus to die instead of us having to die. So if you really believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he died for you and that he rose from the dead, then all you have to do is just pray that God will give you his Holy Spirit. Just say, God, forgive me of my sins. God, forgive me for my sins. I, I believe, I believe that, that you died on a cross and rose from the dead. I believe that you died on a cross and rose from the dead. And that you want to receive the Holy Spirit and to have eternal life with Him. And I want to receive the Holy Spirit and have eternal life with Him. Okay, now you have to really mean that because the Bible says that God will not be mocked. So if you're, if you're just saying it with your lips... God knows that. See, he doesn't judge you based on the words that you say with your lips. He knows exactly what's in your heart. So if you really believe that, then God, then you will be have, have been saved today. And then you'll be on your way to heaven. And what's going to happen now is God's going to slowly transform you into his image. So what you're going to notice is that some of the things you used to love, you don't love anymore. When you used to watch pornography and whatever, yeah, that kind of stuff, you're not going to want to do those things anymore. But you're going to want to live for God. But yeah, let me get you.